Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and I hope this finds everyone well. Today we're taking a look at a keyboard many of us might be familiar with, but this one has been upgraded with what I consider a quite important feature, especially because I primarily work on Linux machines. Today we're taking a look at the GK61 Pro VIA Edition. You heard me right. This keyboard is programmable with Vaya. We're going to find out if there's any limitations on it, but let's go ahead and take a look. I, I, I honestly, I have, I want to say four or five of these. I might have less. I know I've given one or two away, but the GK61, uh, I remember one time it went on sale for, I want to say $24.99. I bought like three of them. <laughs> I actually have a um, an aluminum case that I got off of, I want to say KP Republic, but it was on sale. It was like $7. And I still haven't even gotten around to doing that. But now, maybe I'll put this in there instead of the regular. Because this, I can program. Plus, like many of the Skylooms, it has split spacebar, but it has an extra added bonus. Let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at what we've got. All right, so before diving into the keyboard, let's see what we have included in the box. We have, oh, this is one of the nicer cables I've seen with the Skyloom board. It has plastic um, protective around the plastic parts of this. It's braided. It's nice and thick. It has the magnet. It is quite nice. Yeah, this is a, it's a thick, one of the thicker nylon braided USB-C to USB-A cables. I should say USB-A to USB-C. We have a keycap and switch puller, but there seems to be something else in there. Let's see what it is. All right, come on. Is there something in here or are you just messing with me? Oh, no, we got some screws. Oh, we got... Oh. We've got those little washers of... What keyboard that I see this on? It's kind of like a burger mount, um, but I have not seen them in included. I don't, or did I see them included in the board? I, I can't remember. I've, I've done a few keyboards. <laughs> Sometimes they all get kind of scrambled in my brain. All right, so we've got your keycap and switch puller. One thing that I like to do with these before I start using it is opening up these legs. Why? Because when you grab, it actually makes it easier to grab the switch. And then when you release, the switch will just drop out. You don't have to go in there and pick it or open it up to have it drop out. So it's just a, a little trick that has come in really handy for me. But we'll have to take a look at this burger mount situation. What else do we have in here? Looks like we have some extra keys. We have a couple different color space bars. All right, because this is the pink and blue edition. We have a different color escape key. Oh, and we have a different enter key. So, looks like we got some color options. These look to be space bar, okay. This one is only top double shot, and it actually seems a little lower. Maybe they're the same height. Definitely cherry. But these are double shot, a lot of ribs. You ever have a tool that you misplace and you need it, so you end up ordering another one, and as soon as you get it, you find the original one. That's what happens with me and calipers. Anyway, let's see. So this one that's double shot all the way through. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's 1.6 in thickness, whereas this one that's not fully double shot is 1.2. Let's hope that all the keys are following the double shot all the way through example. Let's go ahead so we don't lose these and put them back in their respective bag. Here it looks like we have some spare switches, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And these are, yep, these are Gatoron Red. Gatoron Red Pros. They are lubed. And yeah, that's the new housing. They have the 
It's not really a diffuser, but it kind of is. Um, I like a lot of these newer switches that have the diffuse that actually sits on top of the LED. But this one has like that plastic clear piece that's a diffuser. In. Nice and light. No spring ping to speak of. And we got two spare switches, which is always nice. I think every pre-built should include at least an extra switch of two per 15, 20 keys. But that's just me. And then we have the full size. Uh, that's probably what those screws are for so that you can screw these in and burger mount this as well because this is basically a separate plate. You have two plates, one for the split space bar and one for a normal space bar. So, all right, these uh, stabilizers are quite well attached and they actually already come clipped and lubricated. Very nice, very nice indeed. And here we are with the GK61 Pro, or this is the GK61 Light. <laughs> said Pro on the outside, says Light here. Um, I don't know. But I do know that we have an updated version. Now, we don't have gasket mounting, and let me guess, we st still probably have a steel plate. Yep, we still have a steel plate. But we do have those thicker double shot keys. He's actually, it's a very sculpted. Wow, oh, wait a minute. Okay, that escape key is actually taller. That's odd. So the escape key included is actually row one. one. Might be row two, unless it's considered row one. I'm not sure we'll check it out but you guys will probably notice the biggest difference here that i'm kind of trying to intentionally ignore till i get to it is the split space bar with a knob now i think uh this is naturally uh programmed for volume and everything but because it's via we should be able to remap it there's also if you've noticed the function key all the way over here that's not where the function key belongs the function key should be right here um so we can remap that because that's just a modifier key taking a look at it we see that it's it's very similar well, let me see let me see if i can find one of my bare bones real quick all right so like i said i have a couple of these and this one is actually still just sitting in the case but i just noticed that the function key is is it always that way yeah they do appear to be not the same dimensions The same height. This one also has the split space bar. This one's much lighter. Well, this one obviously has switches and keys, but this one feels much, much lighter. And this one, oh, wow. Yeah, this one is before. Well, actually, I shouldn't say before. Did they use some in this one? Okay, yeah, there's definitely some upgrades on the interior here. We have what appears to be silicone rubber between the plate and the PCB. It also seems to extend out to act as somewhat of a switch pad. They are still north facing, but it is Skyloom. I don't know if they'll, because I think they're, a lot of their market are not necessarily enthusiasts, but more gamers. I don't know for sure, but a lot of them seem to prefer north facing. I do not believe I've seen a south facing Skyloom yet. Granted, south facing is not as much of an issue as it used to be. Most newer switches have adopted a new mold that has a higher or much more of an angle pitch so that the interference just doesn't. Um, happen anymore and I mean these are cherry and I don't think there's any interference here to speak of but so if you take one of these keys take it out and then 
put it on here the way it is north facing yep and let me see if I can find myself a piece of paper so the interference would usually be right here and if there was interference when I press that down this piece of paper would get caught and wouldn't be able to get pulled out same thing on the front yep there is no interference yeah I do know the Gatoron Pros have been updated so if you're dealing with newer switches south facing interference is no longer an issue so really nowadays it's either you know people that have it set in their mind that you know if i'm going to use cherry keycaps i have to have south facing that's that's really no longer the case all right so this is all right i got it um so it appears that they have two versions they have a gk61 pro that is a uh, free mode or at least um no tri mode yeah but no qmk and via but this one is light so it does have uh via but it does not have three mode which is fine by me i prefer not to have a battery uh the keycaps are pbt double shot which we can see but oh this says that it has I guess there is a little bit of flex in there. It's using an O-ring gasket or burger mount. So it's not crazy, but there is a bit of give when I push. And it shows that it has the plate PCB gasket. And it also shows that it uses the silicone O-ring between the positioning plate and the screw to serve as a buffer. Uh, and they also have it to where it extends out and creates kind of like a switch pad. So these are double shot PBT keycaps. Unfortunately, it does not say the profile. The ones they show on here look like OEM, but it's in the aluminum one. And these are Gateron G Pro 3 switches. All right, now it says QMK and VIA fully supportable, but are they in the QMK repo? Yeah, I am not seeing anything about this. Unfortunately, some manufacturers will be like, hey, this is a QMK via keyboard. And they only release via. And they don't even get it into the via source tree. Um, you know, some of them, they limit the functionality. I don't believe that's the case with this one, but I will be checking that out. So anyway, we definitely have differences. The weight is definitely different. It's much heavier even, even trying to make up for, in my head, the weight of the uh, switches and keycaps. We have the knob, but we can always just go ahead and replace this with the regular space bar. Or we can program space, backspace. However, there's a lot of different ways I've seen this program, but I definitely have to move function to where menu is control all the way and menu over here but I can definitely say this is a a decent keyboard stock it, is it the best no but it's definitely one of the better ones from Skyloom but they've been getting better I think the last one that I took a look at was uh, I want to say GK 75 had the ability for four or six knobs i believe that one also had the padding between the plate and the pcb and it sounded much better than skylungs have in the past as far as being stock now i definitely will be coming back to this in the near future and i've got one mod in particular that i'm doing across numerous keyboards but i will be applying it to this one as well but today we're just taking a look at this one and we're gonna do a stock sound test so Let's take a look at these stabilizers and see what we've got. Now, on that single space bar, those stabilizers were quite well attached, and it appears we have the same situation here. They're quite well attached, and I can see the shines. They are lubricated. Out of curiosity, I went and stretched that one out, and then I started using a different one. Right. Out of curiosity, let's see if 
don't believe we'll find anything, but I want to take a look to see. Yeah, it's very tight. Very well attached. Yep, there is no uh, hole for a PCB mounted uh, stabilizer. And, I mean, being that this is a steel plate, it really wouldn't lend to it anyway. So, but I wasn't really expecting that. But I always check just to make sure. Stabilizer sound really good. I mean, it's um, as far as a affordable 60% with VIA. So far, it's checking off a lot of my boxes, but one of the things that really wins it for me is the split space bar. There's a lot of different ways to use this, and I know that they say that this is the first 60% with a knob, and I would agree that this is the first pre-built 60% with a knob that I've seen, that I've seen. but uh, KP Republic has the BM60EC that has an encoder, so... It's not the first. It's the first pre-built, maybe, but not the first 60% with a knob. So, I really wish I knew what profile that was, because it looks like cherry, but it's a much more sculpted cherry. But, unfortunately, they don't list it. And I wish they did. I really wish they did. Now... As far as the key caps go, like I said, we got a 1.5, 1.6 millimeter thickness, which is perfect. I'm pretty sure that that is part of what's lending to uh, that nice stock sound. And these, I got to say, the new Gatoron G3 Pros are, are nice switches. Um, not only because it has the newer moldings, so you're not going to have issues with a, a north, inter, north facing interference. And also because it has that little window for the diffuser. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Skyloom GK61 Pro QMK Bia Edition in the blue and pink colorway. Now, because this is the QMK version, it does not have wireless, though there is a wireless version as well as an aluminum version, which I will be taking a look at here at a future date. The weight of this keyboard comes in at 618 grams. The chin sits at 20 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 31 millimeters, providing for a typing angle of 8 degrees. Now, this does include a space split bar and knob, though it can be replaced to be used with a standard space bar. Now, the knobs that are included with this are available from Skyloom as extra knobs, they use a little ingenious design uh, that allows it to fit either a switch or the knob, and the knobs are available for $6 at Skyloom. Now, it does come preloaded with your choice of Gatoron G Pro yellow, brown, or red switches. It does come with a double shot PBT keycaps in what looks to be a cherry sculpted profile. It also claims to be a Skyloom O-ring gasket, and in the box does come with screws with tiny little gaskets for each screw. So it looks like it's a combination of a burger mount type of situation. Now, the MCU on this keyboard is an ST32F103C8. This keyboard manufacturer retails for $69.90 from skyloom.vip with free shipping included. So a Skyloom board with QMK and VIA. I gotta say, uh, there's a first for everything and there's definitely a first for this one. I do hope that this is not their first one. Um, they have been coming out with some interesting keyboards as of late, uh, the GK75, um, the GK, 98 or 980. Now I did get a link to their QMK source. Um, they submitted it to the official repository about a month ago. So it, sh it usually takes about three months uh, from what I've seen in the past. So it should be in the uh, in the QMK tree fairly uh, soon. But at least 
I have a link to a GitHub repository so I can make changes. And then, um, because he was like, well, here's the source, you know, if you want it, when I asked Skyling for it, and then it clarified that it basically does the W key when it's in Windows mode, when you press function, and it does uh, the uh, Mac key, it turns white, the M key, it turns white when it's in Mac mode. So I thought it was some sort of bug, but uh, I do plan to go in there and just modify the default key map for myself so that this is always the control and this is always the function but i've mapped it out that way right now it's not, not like i need to but there is a from from the source and just a quick glance over there's a lot of features this mcu appears to be plenty powerful to do anything you want like you know turning on keys you know different colors for the layers all all that stuff uh, there is no way to do the per key rgb and buy it you'd have to do it in kit okay so um it's it's a great kit i do think that it it could use a little bit of modding really <laughs> so i'm going to come back uh, to this fairly soon and mod it up it doesn't sound bad off the bat um i didn't get a choice of switches so they went with red which i mean works i would probably pick yellow or browns but um that's really no big deal i I think he missed my question when I asked him what profile uh, the keycaps are. So they're basically a sculpted cherry, and I'm sure they have a name. I just could not find them, but I didn't look too awfully hard. Um, so yeah, QMK with source. Via should be in the Via tree too shortly, but at least they've got the JSON file, and I'll include a link to that in the description below. But I am happy to have a qmk via skyline board i mean it's just like i said i've purchased so many in the past i've built them for friends it to me it was like the you know it was a good board to introduce people into the hobby yes steel plate and not gasket mounted but it's still i mean i have friends that still use their dk skyline board you know on a daily basis in a way i find it nostalgic now that I can have, you know, a keyboard that I've been messing around with for a while, I actually have QMK Via. There's a, a few keyboards I have that I know have MCUs powerful enough to run QMK, but either I don't know how to enter or it doesn't have a way to enter a DFU mode, or uh, the MCU is not in the QMK repository, so without those libraries, it's there's really nothing you know to do unless I were to actually sit down and write write the base libraries for that particular MCU. So it's nice to have that option. I really do wish there was a way to like plug in the MCU, the layout, you know, maybe select from layouts or even be able to modify the layouts and build out a QMK source tree, you know, just based on all the things you have. Um, obviously, it would be able to create the code for a different MCU, but if you have keyboards with MCUs that are compatible, it would basically create a, a skeleton QMK repository and you can finish up, finish it up and test it. But I'm probably dreaming too much, though who knows? I'm sure it can be done. I know that uh, there is a programmer out there that has written basically a, a front end to capture a Royal Clutch signals and program them. Um, so that's not really changing the firmware. They're changing the firmware, I think, would be the holy grail. Anyway, don't have to worry about that with this. We have, you know, a QMK via keyboard. I will come back to this and mod it. I also want to see if it's going to fit in the uh, GK61 aluminum case that I got. And I might even add, if I can, a couple more uh, uh, burger uh, O-rings and see if I can get a little bit more flex out of it. So I... Uh, Again, thanks to Skyloon for sending this out and also, you know, allowing me to query them with, with uh, different little things about the keyboard. I'll go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the QMK version of the Skyloon GK61. And if you guys have any thoughts or ideas for what you'd like me to do once I do a teardown and a mod, please leave them down in the comments below. Let's start a conversation. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.